Hey guys, today we're gonna to be going over the do's and don'ts of your patrol rifle. I think this is a very important subject because this is the rifle that you're carrying with you daily and you're trusting not only your life, but all the other people's lives in your county or your city or wherever your jurisdiction is. So I think it is wildly important to make sure that you are putting uh, really good accessories and things that you should trust your life with and good stuff and good equipment onto this firearm and find out what works best for you in your environment and where you plan on working. So the three most important things for a patrol rifle are gonna be your optic, your flashlight, and your sling. The rest of this is just accessories and things that are cool to add on that are beneficial, but aren't necessarily game changers. The things that are gonna be the most important are the three that I just mentioned, and we're gonna go over those really quick. First is gonna be your optic, and I think probably your absolute most important. Uh, having something other than iron sights is critical in my mind because you're able to get better acquisition, faster target transitions, and just be able to get shots downrange accurately quicker which is going to be more important when you're in a firefight or an engagement with somebody being able to know that you can make a more accurate shot now the type of optic is going to be completely dependent on who you are what you plan on doing and the environment you work in um, obviously if you are somebody that works in a really rural county and you have longer engagements maybe something with a magnification is a good idea me personally i don't really recommend lpvos in general just because yes you might have longer distances like i work in a rural county so a magnification in my mind is why I have this. I think it's really important to have that. But the problem is, is you also go inside buildings, inside houses a lot. And I don't think LPVOs are fantastic for that. It can work, but I don't think it's the best option. That's why I like being able just to flip this over, have my red dot, or if I really need to, because I know that we're going into a house, I can just unclip this and take off if it's not needed. But I don't really recommend LPVOs just because I don't think they're quite as well-rounded as a red dot. I know that I can shoot up to 300 yards with this red dot comfortably and I really don't see myself engaging anyone past that distance while on patrol. So that's why I went this setup. So if you are somebody that thinks absolutely I need an LPVO, you can absolutely go that route. If you're comfortable with it, just make sure that you know your BDCs, your reticle and understand everything about it so you can get the best out of that LPVO because LPVOs have a lot of information on the reticles usually. And if you understand all that, and that makes that optic even better. Now with magnification, I think another benefit is being able to gather information. You're able to see farther, see closer and see a little bit more so i think that is another benefit to going with something magnified or running yourself a magnifier next thing you're gonna have to figure out is what optic you want to go with now this is going to be difficult because there are a ton of optics out on the market right now but what i will say is make sure you're putting your money in something that is trusted and duty proven that's why i go with aimpoint i have an aimpoint t2 on my home defense gun i have an aimpoint t1 on this don't go cheap with your optic if for some reason you're unable to afford something really nice at the time wait a little bit longer and save up for that really good optic next is gonna be your flashlight this is something i see a lot of guys not running i don't understand why i don't know if it's maybe an older generation thing it is so important even for day shifters to run a flashlight because you need to get positive id on somebody at nighttime or in a dark area and why i say day shifters is because houses are still dark buildings are still dark if you're doing building searches or if you have to go in the interior of a house it is not going to be bright all the lights are probably not going to be on and you're not familiar with that place so make sure you have a light on your gun so you're able to see what you're doing and who you are engaging with or who you are talking with a light is so important in my mind and uh, it blows me away how many people I've noticed that don't have lights on their guns. Now, when you're going for which light you should choose, again, a lot of this stuff is gonna be personal preference and based off of what you do and where you work. I went with the Cloud Defensive Rain because I really like the output and I like the durability. This thing is one of the most durable lights I've ever seen and just the ability to have a clicker here just in case this goes down, I have a backup and just the function and how much trust I have in this light is why I chose this. But Mod Light Surefire, uh, also make some great ones. Uh, stream light if you guys need to go a little bit cheaper and don't want to spend that $300 on a light, which I totally understand. Now sling is next and this is very important as well. It might not be as cool as the optic and everything and the flashlight and all the other accessories that you kind of want to get. And you're like, oh, maybe, maybe I can not get the sling and I can get something cool like a better bolt carrier or a trigger not nearly as important as having a good sling or even just a sling. It doesn't have to be something crazy and fancy, just something that you're able to stow this gun away if you have to go hands-on with somebody, which is really important because you don't want to put this down if you were in a situation. That's the last thing you wanna do is lay this down and have this available for anybody else to grab. Keep this on your body, get a sling, and make sure you know how to use it and, and be able to tighten it and swim out of it and swim in it. 
Um, I think that is really important to have something like this. Now, as you can tell, it has some other fun accessories to it and good upgrades to it. And I think that's really important if you have the money and you aren't skimping on these things. Make sure you put the money into th these three things and once you have good quality optic flashlight and sling, then put your money into the other things. I built this gun personally for myself. Uh, I actually have a YouTube video on the whole build if you're interested in knowing every piece and part of this and why I chose it. Uh, you guys can watch that video here. I built this because I was issued a very basic Colt rifle and I used that for a while. It worked out, it was fine but it just wasn't exactly what I thought I needed and what I wanted to trust my life with. Uh, I'll go over a little bit later here on if they do issue you a gun and don't allow you to buy what to do, um, but I wasn't comfortable with it. There, I couldn't really mount a good light to it. I could if I added some things and changed some things, but I really didn't want to put a ton of money into this gun when I could have taken that money and put it into this gun and build my own. So uh, I'm really happy with the fact that I did this and I definitely recommend doing that for yourself. So when it comes to building your gun, make sure you are being realistic and smart about it. Don't be the guy that throws an IR device on a gun that you don't even have night vision for just because it looks cool or put a bunch of goofy accessories that you're not gonna use. Don't add anything extra weight or extra goofy things that can go wrong onto this gun if you don't need it. Find out what you need, what your department uses. If you guys use night vision, then absolutely throw an IR device on that. If I was gonna use night vision at work primarily, then I would have an IR device on this. I have an IR device on my home defense gun because I have night vision here. I don't use night vision at work, so it's not something I care to put on this gun until we change maybe the way we work and maybe start to incorporate night vision into what we do. But for right now, I'm not gonna do that. And don't be that person that adds unnecessary equipment onto your gun. Get what you need, the bare necessities, and get really good equipment with what you need. I would rather see you have a really expensive optic and flashlight than some really cool Gucci gear on this gun to make it look cool or like a crazy Cerakote or something, I don't know. People do some silly things. So just make sure you are getting the gear that you need before you go and just have some fun with it. Got a couple other little points here I want to mention before we end this video. Backup iron sights I find very important. Just in case this goes down, you still have an ability to aim this gun. Not much weight, doesn't take much rail space, and then they're not that expensive. Another question a lot of people ask is SBR versus pistol, which one you should go with. If your department allows SBR, then it definitely should be on your list of maybe options, but that's really gonna be dependent on your location because you really gotta take into the factors of velocity, terminal velocity, which is wildly important with patrol rifles, and making sure that you're building something that's not just cool and really quick and easy to get around corners, but something that's gonna be deadly and useful and actually help you be able to do your job. I went with a 14.5 pendon weld because I wanted the rifle platform. I didn't wanna have to go through the SBR process and I wanted better terminal velocity and more distance, and that's what I got with this. There's nothing wrong with going with a 10 and a half or an 11 and a half if you understand all those things about that rifle before you build it and maybe find out later like, oh no, maybe I shouldn't have done this because this isn't the best thing for what I'm using. Uh, so as long as you understand those things, then SBR is definitely a good idea because it's definitely great for guys that are like on SRT, being able to go inside a lot, maybe a city worker. Um, those things would be important, but make sure you're checking your department policy and what you guys can do. Some departments are pretty finicky about that. I know a lot of like the older sheriffs um, maybe don't really go this route because all this stuff is fairly new still. Uh, so a lot of them still just think a carry handle and a old Colt is fantastic, which it gets the job done, but there are better options out in the market to make you more proficient at your job. Now, if your department will not let you bring your own gun and they issue you something, then at that point, you're just gonna have to work with what you got. I could have worked with what I had with a Colt if they would not have allowed me to do this, but they did, so I went this route. But if they wouldn't have, just work with what you have. If they allow you to throw a flashlight on it, do what you can, buy quality products, just put all that money towards a really good optic and just put the rest of your time in training and being super proficient with this gun. And that goes with either it's a really crappy gun that they issue you or it's a really, really good and fancy gun that you built and you're all happy with. Make sure you're super comfortable with your platform because when you get into that situation, it's gonna be a very stressful environment and you're gonna revert back to what you know and what you've trained. So make sure you are training with your system, your gun, make sure you manipulate things, make sure you shoot this thing, make sure you're dry firing, make sure you're manipulating all your buttons and knowing how to use everything. So when that situation comes, which I hope it never has to come for anybody and you never have to use this thing other than to have to put down a deer every once in a while, uh, I hope you never absolutely ever have to use this. But if you ever are put in that situation, uh, you have to defend your life and somebody else's, then be proficient with this and know exactly what you're doing and how to use it. Unfortunately, in law enforcement, there is not enough training, especially because they want to defund and take away training. It's not enough training with firearms. It's kind of something that's set to the wayside, so it's kind of up to you to do. And I'm telling you now, make sure you put the time and money into your firearms training and proficiency because it is something that is one of the most important things, uh, maybe 
below uh, your verbal judo, making sure that you know how to conversate and talk with people and, and knowing the law. Another little tip is making sure you know when you're high over bore, your holdovers if you're running an LLPVO with uh, your reticle. Uh, those things are going to be super helpful, especially if you're running close quarters, knowing where that bullet is going to impact versus where you're aiming. So make sure you're you're looking that kind of stuff. There's some really good videos on YouTube here and, and going over those things. So I'm not going to waste too much time talking about that. Just make sure you, you know and understand height over bore and your holdovers if you're running different optic setups. Now, with all that being said, I can sit up here and say this right here is the exact gun you need to buy. This is the perfect law enforcement rifle on the market. And that would be a lie because every person's environment and work situation is different. I don't know who you are or where you work or your environment. So I hope you were able to take the information that I gave you and are able to put that into your own patrol rifle. But when it all comes down to it, this is going to be the gun that you trust your life with. So the parts that you pick... That's up to you to decide what you think are the best. If you need any questions answered because you might not know what are the best or what maybe you should go with, feel free to ask me in the comments and I will be happy to help you. I'm sure there's a ton of other people out here with a lot of experience, probably more experience than I have, that would love to help you out, answer those questions, and help give you the best solution and the best bang for your buck because there are a ton of options on the market. These things are like the Honda Civics of firearms. You can buy pretty much anything for them and go any route with any different price range. So feel free to ask the questions and we will answer them as uh, good as possible hopefully get you the stuff that you need because we all need to be here for each other and help each other out we're all in the same profession together and uh, we need to make sure we have each other's back so definitely ask in the comments below and we'll be happy to help so i hope this video helped you out if you guys want to help out the channel and things i do here there's a couple ways to do that down in the description are discount codes from companies that i trust that you can use to save some money or you can go to my website from there there's other links to brownells or precision premier body armor anything you purchase using those links does help me out a lot and i appreciate that if not i just appreciate you guys being here liking sharing and subscribing is a big help and just being interactive in the comments i love uh, having conversations with you guys and going over different stuff so that stuff is helpful as well if you guys want to check out my instagram and facebook uh, you guys can dm me there and we can talk and go over stuff i'm a lot more interactive there just because it's easier platform to actually talk one-on-one -on -one with people than here on YouTube. Uh, but a couple other companies that help me in the channel and the things I do here is Howitzer, great clothing company, and they donate 5% of proceeds to charity. Actually, if you're LEO and uh, you guys want to do training, they are actually running something where they send you free training. All you have to do is provide the ammo and show up and you get free training because they saw a lack of training in law enforcement, which unfortunately there is, and they are taking their own dime and paying for your training. So sign up for that and get some awesome training from uh, Achilles Tactics and uh, first defense, I believe the other one is that uh, are doing the training. So great instructors. I've, so look into that. And then uh, also TA Targets, fantastic target company. And uh, basically the only targets that I use, you can use code Tactical Advisor to save 10% off. Other than that, guys, thank you so much. I don't want to make this video any longer than it already is. And uh, stay safe out there. And I appreciate you all.